If you want to start game development or you want to improve your current skills, in this video I'll be recreating one of the micro games from Among Us, but that will be just the start of the big picture. I want to create the full game, but with a twist. I want to drop all the killing and all the line from the game. And who knows, maybe it will turn out better than the original. The tutorials are going to be both in Bolt and C Sharp. In this video I'm going to be using C Sharp, but if you want the Bolt version, the link is in description. So let's get started. Now I haven't played this game myself. Maybe if I get a million views in this video, I'll consider it from watching one of the Mr. Beast video. I found one marker game or a task as they're called in the game that I think is pretty good if you're trying to get started with making game. So this is the one that we're going to make in this video. I need some art to create this game. So I just use a snippet tool, take a screenshot of the game, open it up in Krita. And what I need is two states of the switch when it's up or down and also the two states of the light when it's on or off. Export all of those files and now we have all the art for the game. Now I went through that real fast because I'm assuming that your main interest in how to make the game, not how to create the art for the game. So now I'll slow down so you can follow each step. And for the game engine, I'm going to go with using Unity. Now there's a lot of discussion which engine you should use and which one is better, but that shouldn't matter for this video. So just take a look. If you like the process of Unity and you can understand it, then the tool is good for you and you can start making games with that. You can always switch to another tool if you want later on. So I'll create a new project and it's going to be a 2D project. And the first thing is I'm going to import all my art assets. Just drag those files in to the asset location at the bottom. Now I can drag the BG, the background file, to the hierarchy. Go into the game window to see how it looks on the camera. And by selecting the main camera in the hierarchy, I want to change the background from this blue color to a black color. That looks much better. Now I'll change the size of the camera from 5 to 4 so that the background would cover more of the camera. The next step is adding the switches. So I'll go back to the scene and add the down switch into the hierarchy under the BG game object by just dropping it on top. Now I need to position it at the right place so that it will cover the other knob that is in that place. And for the new down object to be on top, I need to change the order layer from zero to one. So it would be above the background. If you need to zoom in, you can use the scroll. You can also change the alpha channel of the color to make it transparent so you can see where is it positioned in the back. Move it around to position at the right spot. You can also move the object by changing the position in the transform component inside the specter. It might be a better choice if you know the exact values that you want to place it at, but I'm just eyeballing it for this game. Now I want to group all of the parts of the switch, the down switch, the up switch, and the on and off. So I'll create an empty game object and position the down object inside of the game object. You need to make sure that the down object is positioned at a zero, zero. And I'll rename the newly created game object to switch. Now I can add the up image into the switch object. Reset the transform so that the positions can be at zero, zero. Now order in layer needs to be set to two so that it will be above the down switch at all times. Because the idea that I have for turning the switch up or down is just by switching the active state of the game object. So if the up game object is turned off, then we'll see the down object. If we turn the up object back, we'll see the switch in the up position. Now you might have noticed that the up image and the down image are not perfectly aligned. So just because it was bothering me, I shift the up object a little bit to compensate for that. And now it's all perfect. So now you can repeat the same process for the light on and off. So the position of game objects in Unity is really close to the way you position them in Photoshop or other photo editing software. You have your layers, which are game objects in Unity. And then you can also put game objects inside the game objects to group them together. So I added on and off images into the game, reset the position, set the order layers, and then I created another game object, light placed both of those objects inside there and position the light object where it needs to go. Set the order in layer for on to two. And now it's working exactly like the up and down. 
If you've seen Unity for the first time, you might think that that is a lot of things that you need to know to use it. But with everything that I just covered, you're pretty much seeing everything that you can know to position the objects inside your scene. You can also rotate and scale the objects in your scene, but they work in a similar way as positioning. So now with this knowledge that you have, you can start placing assets in your game. The game that I'm creating right now has five switches. So I could just go and create duplicates of the switch that I just created by clicking Ctrl D on the keyboard. But there is another way of creating duplicates or clones that can help us in the long run. And it's by creating prefabs. To create a prefab, you can just drag any game object from your hierarchy into the assets folder, and that will create a prefab. Now you see the benefits of prefab shortly, but right now let's do some cleaning up. And I have these images in my assets folder that I probably should move into another folder. So I'll create a folder called art and move those images inside there. Now I'll add another switch to my game by dragging the prefab into the hierarchy and position it at the second switch place. Do the same for the other three. And now the game has five switches. All of the assets for our game are already in the scene. The next step is creating the logic for the game. So like I said, I'll show two ways of creating the logic. And in this video, I'll be using C Sharp to create the logic. I did create the logic first using Bolt. And if you want to see that video, the link is in description. But because I implemented the logic with Bolt first, there'll be some Bolt files and some Bolt components that my project is going to have that you might not have, but they're all turned off. So you don't have to worry about them. One thing that I need to do before I start writing the script is add a box collider for the switch. I'll explain the reason for that a little bit later, but for now, let's add a box collider. So I'm going to select the switch prefab, go to inspector and at the very bottom, click add component. And the component that I'm adding is a box collider 2D. To see or edit the collider shape, you can click on the edit collider and that will display the box that is going to be used for the collider. I need to stretch it a little bit more so it can cover more of the switch. That looks much better. And now it's time for some C Sharp. So to edit C Sharp script, you need to use some kind of code editor. And I just used the Visual Studio. The way that I install Visual Studio for Unity is by using Unity's hub. Inside Unity hub, under installs, you have the list of installed versions of Unity there. And you can click the option icon on one of the installs. There you have the add modules. The first thing at the very top, you have the dev tools and under there you have Microsoft Visual Studio Community 2019. I check that and install it that way. You only need to install it once. So if you installed it, you're all good. There's one setting that you want to change if you want code autocomplete or code suggestions for Unity. And you can do that by going to edit, preferences and under external tools. For the external script editor, choose the Visual Studio Community 2019. That is the process that I go through to get the code editor to work with Unity. To create the first script, you can click add component and type in the name of the script. And I'll call the script switch. When you search for a component that doesn't exist, you have an option for new script. Click that and then click create and add. Now we can open up the script in Visual Studio. And this is the starting point of the scripts in Unity. So if you've seen the Bolt version of this video, and I would suggest you watching that version first, if you're new to Unity or you're new to programming, I think it'll give you some more information that can help you to understand what's going on here. And just like we have in Bolt, the C-sharp script starts with two methods, the start method and the update method. So first I want to add some options for this script that I can set in the inspector. And I can do that by creating variables or properties. I'm not going to try to teach you programming in this video, but if you want me to make a video on introduction to programming, let me know in the comments. So the place where you put the parameters for them to be available in the inspector is on the same level as the methods. So inside the class and I'll place him right above the start method. Now to make him available in the inspector, I'll use public and the type for the first variable is going to be game object and I'll call it op because I'm going to be connecting the up game object from the prefab that we have. Same thing with the next variable, public game object, except the name of the variable will be on. The third variable is going to be public, but we're going to make it Boolean. A Boolean has two values, true or false. And the variable name is going to be is on. 
and we will use that to keep track if the switch is on or off. And the last public variable they're going to add is another Boolean, and it's going to be is up. The is on and is up we'll use for the initialization of the starting state. And I'll show how we're going to configure that in the expector in a little bit. But now let's go into the start method. And in the start method, I want to use the values from is on and is up to set the active state of the game objects up and on. Set active is one of the methods inside the game object. So I can use on dot set active and pass in is on to do that for is on. And I can do the same thing for up up that set active and pass in is up as the value. Also in here, I need to keep track of how much lights are turned on. And I'll add an if statement that will check if the light is on. I'll leave a comment for now, but I'll have to come back here and add the code for counting that light. Now let's go back to Unity. And in Unity, when you select a switch now, you can see that you have options under switch. So I'll go through and choose some random values for all the switches so that they'll start at a different state. And then I'll go inside a prefab by double clicking in it and connect the up and on game objects. I'm connecting it inside the prefab so it will automatically connect for all the switches that I have. Now let's test it out and make sure that the initialization is working properly. There you go. As soon as the game started, you can see that the switches changed their state. Some of them are on, some of them are off, and some of them are up and the others are down. So that's a good start. And now let's go add the logic for toggling the switch on and off. Back to the switch script. And I'm not going to be using the update method for this script. So I'll remove that. And instead, the method that I'm going to use is on mouse up. This is one of Unity's methods. And it's going to be triggered whenever you click on the mouse while over a collider. And that is why we added the box collider for the switch. Inside this method, first I'll toggle the value of the is on and is up. And I can do that by writing is up equals exclamation mark is up. And the exclamation mark is a not, which takes the opposite of the value. So if is up is false, then exclamation mark is up is going to be true. So that's how I toggle the Boolean value. So I do the same thing for is on. And afterwards, I can use those values to set the active state, just like we did in the start method. And I can go to Unity now and test out to make sure that the toggle is working. And it looks like everything's good. Toggles are working just like expected. Now I'll create a new script under the BG game object and call it main. And the script is going to be counting how many switches are on. And when all of the switches are on, then a text will be displayed saying that you did it. Here's some quick steps of how to create that text. In the hierarchy, right click and then under UI, there is a text game object. Click on that to create it. And the text that I'll write is you did it. I'll go to the game view to see how the text looks inside the game and tweak some settings to make it look like this. Set active state to false so that we display that only when you have all the lights on. Open the main script. And in this script, I added two public variables. One is an integer and that one I'll set to the total amount of switches that the game has. And I'll use the second variable to connect the win text game object so I can set it active whenever all the switches are on. Also, I added one private variable, an integer, and I named it on count. The initial value is set to zero, and I'll use this variable to count how many switches are on inside the script. I set it to private because I don't need it to be seen in the inspector. Now for the script, I created my own custom method and called it switch change. I have one parameter that the method accepts and it's an integer points. The idea for this method is to be triggered whenever the switch gets changed. And if the switch was turned on, then the value for the points that you would pass in with this method will be one. If the switch gets turned off, then the value that will pass in is negative one. The first thing that I'll do in this method is increment the on count by the points that was passed in. So to do that, I do on count equals to on count plus points. After I increment the count, 
I'll do an if statement and compare the count with the switch count. If the numbers are matched, that means all the switches are on. And then I'll set active to true for the win text, which will display you did it text. Now to let the switch script access this method that we just created, switch change method, I'm going to use a singleton design pattern. So for that, I'll add another public variable, but this variable is going to be static and I'll call it instance. The type for this variable is main, which is this class itself. I'll show you in a little bit how I'm going to use that static public variable, but to set the value of this variable, I'm going to use the awake method. You have already seen the start and update method, but the awake method runs right before the start method. And since I'll be trying to access this instance variable from a start method, I need to set it in the awake method so it will be available when I'll need it. The only thing that I do inside this method is set instance to this. And this, in our case, refers to the instance of this class that is attached to BG game object. We'll set in this script. And now the only thing is left is using this method inside of our switch script. So let's go there. And here we'll use that method in two places. So in the start method, after we set the active, I have the if statement that checks if the switch is on. And if the switch is on, I want to count that switch. And here is where the static public variable comes in. So you see that I call main and then I get the instance variable. Now that variable instance is basically giving me access to the BG main component that we added, which is our script. And this is a neat trick that you can use if you know that that class is gonna be used only once because the alternative way of making the connection was to create another public variable inside a switch and then connect the BG object to it and have access to the main script like that. But that would require for me to connect the BG object to every switch that I create which is extra setup time. Once I have the access to the instance of the class, I can call the method switch change and pass in one, because in here I'm counting the switches that are on. The second place where I'll use the switch change method is inside on mouse up. So in here, after set active, I'll add an if statement that will check for is on, which is exactly the same thing that I was doing in start. But in on mouse up, I'll have to add an else statement. And that is if the switch is turned off, I need to pass a negative one as the argument. Now there is a shorter way of writing that if else and is by using this line right here, but I'll just leave the long way. So with that, we're all done with the scripts. And now we just need to go and configure the main script on the BG object. So set the switch count to five and connect the uwin text. Start the game. And now if I enable all of these switches, you can see the text appears, you did it. If I turn any of the switches off, then the text disappears. So we can say that the micro game is done. There will probably be some tweaks that we'll have to do when we implement this micro game into the actual game. But for now, that is where we're going to leave this game off. Now I hope you learned a lot from this video and that I give enough information for you to recreate this game on your own. If you also want to see the logic of this game made with Bolt, there's a link in the description. Maybe for you, it'll be easier to use visual scripting for making your game instead of C Sharp. So check that out. But that choice is up to you. If you're just beginning with game development, I do recommend you to actually try recreating this game. Follow the tutorial step by step, because that is one of the ways that you can learn to create games. Now I'm planning to at least make another micro game from Among Us before I start making the main game. Be sure to subscribe so you get notified when the next one is gonna be out. If you have any suggestions or questions, write in the comments below. Click on the like button if you liked the video and I'll see you in the next one.